Hello! In this video, we're going to use the Upgrade Assistant tool to upgrade a simple class library. Now, up until this point in this series of videos, we've been preparing to upgrade by analyzing our solution, talking about the overall approach, installing tools, and so on. We're finally to a point now where we're ready to start making some changes. Now, you might remember from some of the other videos that we have two different sets of tools that can be useful for this. We have the Upgrade Assistant tool, which upgrades projects uh, in place, one step at a time, and is useful for, for projects that don't have system.web dependencies and that aren't extremely large. So for a lot of your class libraries, uh, any sort of console apps, Windows desktop applications, Upgrade Assistant is a great option. We also have the incremental migration tooling, which will upgrade a project by gradually moving one piece at a time to a new CS proj, and that's the recommended tool for web apps. In this case, because we have multiple projects in our solution, it's good to start with Upgrade Assistant in order to order those projects, reason about which order we're going to upgrade them in, and then use Upgrade Assistant to start upgrading some of the lower level class libraries that other projects depend on. As we work our way up that tree and we get to the web apps, we'll go ahead and use system web adapters to help with that, and we'll use incremental migration tooling in Visual Studio as a way of upgrading our web project. So let's get started. I'm going to share my screen here. Here's my sample prod, my sample solution. It, like I talked about at the very beginning, this is the eShop sample that we use a lot. It's an ASP.NET MVC e-commerce site written on .NET Framework. Uh, you can see that this particular project I'm looking at is targeting .NET Framework 461. Uh, we have three project files. We have the eShop MVC project, which is the MVC app. Then we have two helper libraries, eShop Legacy Utilities, which has some web-centric utility functions, and eShop Legacy Common, which I'm looking at now. And this one primarily includes uh, just some models. This is a very small project to help us get started with something simple, but we have the um, shared models that are used by all of the other projects. So, you know, our catalog items, our, um, you know, catalog type, our item view models, things like that. There's also a small helper um, class in here that has some logic for how we serialize and deserialize types that we're storing um, as part of the app's execution. So, very simple uh, class library, nothing unusual about this, and we're going to go ahead and use Upgrade Assistant to upgrade this for us to .NET Standard. So if I jump over to my command prompt where we're going to execute Upgrade Assistant, we'll be using Upgrade Assistant, we'll use the Upgrade command. Before we start, let's do dash dash help and take a look at our options. So there's a few options here of interest. Um, so if we use the dash T option, we'll be able to specify which uh, platform we're trying to upgrade to, whether it's the current .NET version, the long-term support one, or the preview one. We don't specify a particular target framework like .NET 7 or .NET Standard because the Upgrade Assistant tool will intelligently choose the target framework that makes sense for the type of project we're upgrading based on whether we want to be on the current, long-term support, or preview train of releases. You can specify dash E as a way of specifying which uh, project you want to use as your entry point. So this is like the, the ex executable of the solution, or perhaps another way to think about it is the project that you ultimately want upgraded at the end of the day. So it's going to upgrade that project and any of its dependencies. So if you run Upgrade Assistant on just one project file, you don't need this. Or if you run it on a solution and sort of interactively tell it which entry point you want, you don't need this. But if you want to run Upgrade Assistant um, in a non-interactive mode, then you're going to need to specify dash E as a way of saying which of the project files is the one that ultimately you want to upgrade in potentially a large solution with many projects in it. We do have this non-interactive flag. By default, Upgrade Assistant is going to go through multiple upgrade steps one at a time so that the user understands what changes are being made to their project. We recommend doing it this way at first so that you can understand what the tool is doing and it's not just a lot of changes made to your project without you understanding them. Once you're more familiar with the Upgrade Assistant tool 
or as you're trying to automate it, you can use this non-interactive flag so that it will just run all of the upgrade steps um, without interaction from the user, and you don't have to sit there and hit enter to go on to the next step every time you want to move on. Uh, if something isn't working, you can use the verbose flag as a way of learning more about what maybe went wrong or what's happening, what the tool's doing. It does generate a lot of console output though, so I don't recommend the verbose flag unless you're specifically trying to diagnose some sort of issue. Visual uh, Upgrade Assistant has to be able to build the project as part of upgrading it. And so uh, in order to enable that, we do allow you to specify the path to Visual Studio and MS Build. If these aren't specified, then Upgrade Assistant will look for the latest version of Visual Studio and MS Build installed uh, automatically and use those. So these are optional flags if you have a lot of different dev environments present and you want to choose which one to use. And then finally, Dash X allows you to specify extensions that you want to use with Visual Studio uh, with Upgrade Assistant. Um, and we'll talk in some later videos about how you can extend the tool, but just know that there's an option here for including those if they haven't been installed as default you can specify them uh, explicitly with the dash X flag. So for this demo, we're going to do upgrade assistant. We're going to run the upgrade command. And we will say that I'm going to use a preview release since right now .NET 7 is, is still in preview. It should be releasing uh, as the current release soon. And then with that, I'll just point the tool at my solution file. Again, you can point at a project file or a solution. In this case, I'll point it at the solution since we're not quite sure where we want to start with this upgrade, and we want the tool to help us with that. So it starts up, it initializes sort of its default extensions, it loads MS Build and Visual Studio from uh, default locations, just finding the latest ones I have installed on my machine. You can see I do have this preview version of Visual Studio that's getting picked up. If I didn't want to use that, if I wanted to use a um, stable version of VS, I could uh, use the VS path to, to point it at that. Now, because I've pointed out a solution file, rather than upgrade the entire solution, which might not be what we want, Upgrade Assistant always works one project at a time. And it's going to start by asking us what our entry point project is. This is going to be the project that at the end of the day, we want to be upgraded. And then based on that, it will figure out all of the projects that need to be modernized in order to support that entry point project. So, uh, it tells me that that's the step we're on. I'm going to choose one to apply this step where we're going to pick our entry point. Also, throughout Upgrade Assistant, if you want to choose the first option as your command, you can just push enter and it will default to the first option, uh, just as a quick um, optimization. So in this case, at the end of the day, we want our MVC app running on ASP.NET Core. So our entry point is going to be option three, eShop Legacy MVC. Okay, then we'll go on to the next step. The next step is we have to choose which project we want to upgrade. So now that we've told Upgrade Assistant we want to upgrade this particular solution and the MVC project is our entry point, it's going to have us choose which project we want to upgrade first. Now it has ordered these according to how they depend on one another. Because eShop Legacy MVC depends on the other two projects, it's going to be upgraded last. Because a best practice when you're upgrading from .NET Framework to .NET 7 is that you want to start with your lower level libraries, moving them to .NET Standard, and then work your way up that dependency tree. Because if we were to upgrade this MVC project first, we would run into problems with it trying to depend on these other projects that were still targeting .NET Framework. So that has to be the last thing we upgrade. So based on its analysis of the dependency structure of our solution, Upgrade Assistant is recommending that we upgrade eShopLegacy.com in first. So we'll go ahead and push enter to accept that recommendation. And now we're in the primary view of Upgrade Assistant where we're going to upgrade a project. This is how Upgrade Assistant does most of its work, is one project at a time. If we take a look here, you can see we have a series of uh, 10 different steps, if you include the moving to a next project as a step, that Upgrade Assistant is going to walk through to help us upgrade from .NET Framework up to .NET 7. The very first step is to back up the project, because remember, Upgrade Assistant, unlike some of our other tooling, is upgrading in place, and it's not going to be able to completely upgrade every project that it runs on. So if we're going to make in-place changes to your project, and you might not be in a buildable state when the tool exits, we want to make sure that before we do any of that, we've done it, we've taken a backup so that you can easily go back to the uh, starting configuration of your project if for some reason you, you don't like the way it ended up. 
So we'll go ahead and apply that step. We'll take the recommended path for where to back up to. Okay, so we've now copied that and you can see that that step gets marked as complete. And now we're on the step to convert the project to an SDK style uh, project for a file format. If we go back over to VS Code, you can see that our project is using the old um, CS Proj format, which is not as human readable, it's a little bit more verbose. The first thing we need to do when we're modernizing is we need to upgrade to the new uh, SDK style project format because that's what .NET 7 and .NET Standard expect to use. So I'll go ahead and push enter to apply this step. I do get a, a little uh, message here saying that app, I have an app config file and that may need updated as well, so that's something to remember. And then it updates my project file to uh, the new SDK style project. If I come over here and look, you can see we have a much smaller project now because this is a simple class library. It still targets Net 461. We're going to change the target framework in a future step, but initially we've changed the project file to use the new SDK style format. Okay, we'll go on to the next step. Now at this point, the next step is to review our NuGet dependencies and see if any of these NuGet package dependencies uh, need to be changed based on the changes that we made to the project file format. You can see that we didn't find any duplicate references. There were no packages that need updated based on package maps. Uh, everything is compatible. Notice that everything is compatible because these um, packages, even the Newtonsoft JSON one, which isn't going to work with .NET 7, they still work with our current framework of .NET 461, and we haven't changed this yet. So this step that we're on, the first time that we update NuGet packages, it's all about just related to the file format changes of our project file. Specifically, uh, because we've copied over all of the NuGet dependencies from our packages.config file, it's possible that we have some transitive package references here that we don't need, and so those are going to be cleaned up. The other item that here gets addressed is there is this Microsoft.NET Upgrade Assistant Extensions Analyzers package, which includes the same uh, Roslyn analyzers that Upgrade Assistant uses to update your code for .NET 7. We can install those analyzers and code fix providers as a NuGet package, and so the tool does that. I'll go ahead and apply that. So that now, as I'm updating this project in the future, if I were to copy over code that, um, or that, you know, was using .NET Framework APIs that needed updated, using this NuGet package, those will get flagged. They can be automatically updated with code fixes. Uh, or if there was some sort of um, code pattern that Upgrade Assistant could detect but not automatically fix, having this NuGet package here means that when I open up my project after the upgrade, I'll get diagnostics for those so that I know to go look at them. Okay, so let's check out our next step. Um, because we haven't changed the TFM yet, most of the package update steps weren't super interesting. And because there was no work to be done, they got automatically marked as complete. Uh, the next step is to change the target framework. You can see that it's recommending a .NET standard because this is a class library with no .NET uh, 7 or Windows specific dependencies. So it can be updated to .NET standard, which will allow it to be shared between both .NET framework and .NET 7 callers, which is great for this upgrade scenario because as I'm upgrading some of the projects in my solution, other projects which haven't been upgraded yet will still be able to depend on this, on this project. So I'll go ahead and apply that. If we come back here, now you can see we have changed our target framework to .NET standard. Okay, coming back, take a look at our next step that we need, and it's going to be a second round of NuGet package updates. And we do two rounds again because first we're updating packages just to clean up transitive dependencies and things like that, which might have been necessary after updating the project file format. But now that we've actually retargeted to .NET standard, we may have additional changes needed uh, for packages that aren't going to work with .NET Standard 2.0. So for example, we see here that we need to remove the reference to Newtonsoft JSON and then add an updated reference to that package. And if we look at the console output, we're told why that is. <clears throat> Newtonsoft JSON version 6.04 does not support .NET Standard 2.0, but a newer version, the tool has automatically detected, a newer version 6.0.8 does support it. Okay, so we'll go ahead and apply these changes. So we've removed the old one. Now we've added the new one. And notice that we're updating to 6.0.8, not to the latest version of, of uh, Newtonsoft JSON. The way Upgrade Assistant works is that it will upgrade you to the latest minor and build version of the smallest major version of the package that's going to work 
with your project. And the reason it does that is because we don't want to introduce unnecessary breaking changes by using a much newer NuGet package that maybe is going to require you to change how you're using that package when a, an older NuGet package would have worked with your target framework. Okay, now at this point, a lot of stuff has turned green because this is a very simple project and a lot of these steps don't have any work to do. The way Upgrade Assistant works is after you've applied a step, it will go to the next step. So like checking for any Windows app SDK packages that need changed, um, or sorry, we were down here, or adding any template files that are needed, looking for WCF uh, services that need upgraded to core WCF, anything like that. And it's, uh, we'll, we'll look to see if any work that he's done if any of these steps don't have any work they need to do, they automatically get marked as complete and the tool goes on to the next step. So with our very simple class library, you can see we've skipped past updating the config file, updating WCF services, because none of those applied to our particular project. We're now down here in updating the source code. And there is one analyzer which is fired and it's that it found this use of unsafe deserialize in the serializing method. And unsafe deserialize is not an API that exists on uh, .NET 7. Now the deserialize command is an equivalent that does the same thing and should work for .NET 7. So we're able to automatically fix that. So if I apply this uh, next upgrade step, it tells me where it's updating. It says it's updating serializing.cs to address this diagnostic. And now if I come over here, you can see it's been fixed to call binary .deserialize, which does exist on .NET 7. Okay, at this point, we're ready to move on to the next project. And so we leave that project specific view and we're back to selecting which project we want to upgrade. And if I apply this, it's going to show me my choices. It's going to say eShop Legacy Common is complete. So next I should upgrade, it's recommending the eShop Legacy Utilities and then going on to eShop Legacy MVC. I'm actually going to exit the tool at this point because eShop Legacy MVC has web dependencies, which is going to make it not a great fit for upgrading with Upgrade Assistant. So from here on in these videos, we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna start using some other tools to upgrade our web specific projects. But I wanted to show upgrading this simple shared class library first, the eShop Legacy Common project, because this is the experience you're gonna go through with anything that doesn't have web dependencies. So any of your uh, shared class libraries that aren't web specific, any of your WinForms or WPF apps, your Xamarin apps, your console apps, your um, WCF services, anything like that, you would use this upgrade assistant upgrade workflow that we've been going through. So at this point, we will exit the tool. If we come over here, you can see that we've updated our serialized class. Our CS proj is updated to work with, um, to, to compile for .NET standard with updated NuGet packages that are going to work. So at this point now, uh, we'll give upgrade assistant a moment to save its state so that we can resume execution later if we needed to we'll go ahead and uh, we'll build this to make sure that it's working as we expect. Okay, so we will run. Uh, so let's actually go to our, let's see, where are we? We need to go to eShopLegacy.common. We can do a .NET build. And because this was a simple uh, project, of course, we, um, we are able to build it uh, for .NET Standard 2.0. And with that, we are now ready to uh, upgrade some of our other projects, which we'll do in the next video.